Hi everybody, it's Nick McDonald speaking. Welcome to Ice Commentary for the week commencing 10th of November 2013. Just starting here with the monthly chart. And we've mentioned this obviously, you know, virtually week in, week out, just what a great monthly trend we have going on here. And the monthly trend continues and right now shows no sign of weakness. Now one thing we know, and when I say no, I really mean no. We know that at some point it will pull back. What we don't know, however, we don't know when that pullback will occur. So there's all sorts of people out there blogging and doing commentary in the markets that will tell you this is going to pull back and all the reasons why going long therefore is dangerous. And they might well be right if we were looking to go long and hold that for the next five years in terms of you know buying the Russell at these uh, this position and looking to hold it for the very long term. However, in the short term, what we also have to do is come back and just look at things like the daily and the weekly charts and think we are traders. Therefore, in the short term, we need to look to profit in the short term. Now, the more that we go up on the monthly chart, the more pressure there is. I think of it a little bit like gravity. The further you throw an object into the air, the more gravity there is, the more likelihood there is of pushing that object back towards earth but some people could throw that object a lot higher than others and you know often that can stay up in the air for a long time and price is really just staying away from the ground for quite some time here I think of price and when I look at price and moving averages on the monthly chart I'm thinking of price as an object which is thrown in the air happens to have been thrown quite some time we know with certainty it will come back we just don't know exactly when that is going to happen. So it's a case of timing and in the short term, and it's a case of us still looking to make money as traders. What we don't want to be doing is selling, 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 thinking this has to come down because the people that are out there blogging and telling us how bearish the market is, well, they've been bearish all through these rallies that we've been in. So for the whole of 2013, just as a, an example of a small part of this trend, for the whole of 2013, the opportunity has undoubtedly been to the long side, but there's been people that are very bearish the whole time now those people will be correct one time when the market does sell off but at the moment they keep on being wrong and then they'll tell us they're right when the market eventually sells off in the longer term that's fine in the shorter term we need to look for places that we can still look to trade the markets and that continues to be to the long side summarizing all of that there still has to be some caution so there still has to be some caution in terms of the further away we get the, the more overextended we're starting to look on the monthly chart on the, across the board on the indices the more caution we just might attach to okay we, we're still bullish on the short term certainly I'm still bullish on the short term but there is always just a case of I know that the market will pull back at some time I'm managing my risk accordingly and understanding that at some point in time my long trades might well get stopped out and might get stopped out even with quite a bit of slippage maybe even some gaps depending on what happens so I'm aware of that I'm aware of the risks I'm aware that the markets will sell off and I'm looking for reasons to join that sell-off as and when that occurs and I'll be looking for the chance to tell me the sell-off is now underway right now I'm seeing no signs of that that doesn't mean it won't be this week when the sell-off occurs it might be a week away it might be a month away it might be a year or two years away when that occurs I'll We'll look for the signs and I'll look to trade that. But right now, I am seeing no signs of it. And I'm therefore still bullish on the short term. And actually, just looking at my analysis for this week and summarizing a little bit uh, more you know, quickly perhaps than normally, because I've just gone and talked about that uh, bigger picture kind of view there. But ultimately here, we're seeing that same pattern that I've pointed out so many times before. And that is a bullish candle back into the averages on the weekly charts with pull back in here bullish candle broke the high bullish candle broke the high bullish candle we didn't break the high that time here was a bullish candle we broke the high had a good run bullish candle here broke the high had a nice run and we've got the same thing here we've got a bullish candle for last week we're looking therefore for this week to see if we can break the high of last week let me tell you the high of last week it was 1109.70 if we break the high of last week then ultimately as a technical analyst what I was a technical trader not just analyst I'm here and I'm looking at patterns that have repeated themselves this is a pattern by the way I've traded for years not just in the la this part of this year it's a pattern I've taught people for years and it just so happens to be a pattern which is repeating itself really nicely so far in 2013 within the context of this trend we can go back and just you know randomly point out other times when the same pattern has worked as well but it just so happens to be working now and therefore this week I am bullish if we break up through the high of last week if we don't break the high of last week and we break down through the low first then that would be a different story I'd just be looking for where it might pull back to maybe back into this 1050 level which we started looking at last week as well as we'd pull back in here to some of these previous highs around 1050 to 1055 so for now though I am bullish and my preference this week is bullish if we break up through those highs if we do break down through the lows I'd be expecting price to stall around the 1050 to 1055 type region and just looking for another similar setup at that point just quickly looking at the cash indices because we talked about these 
uh, last week. The Dow has broken up through those highs, which is good. Not only did it break up through them, but it's closed up above them. So that resistance that we were seeing is now uh, been broken, which is good and strong and positive and it is looking likely to continue just looking at the monthly chart even we did get that pullback on the monthly there so the now uh, the Dow now I'd consider nowhere near as overextended as I would say the Russell which hasn't had a pullback to its moving averages yet but it's one good sign that at least one major market there has had that pullback and it's positive and it looks strong looking at the S&P as well we're seeing a similar situation. Monthly chart is bullish. Daily chart uh, across the board. The dailies, because we had a big down day on Thursday and a big up day on Friday, they kind of cancel each other out to an extent. The big down day looks very bearish, but the big up day is you know, completely countered that and looks very bullish. So it's kind of a neutral across the two days. But ultimately, the weekly chart here on the S&P just continues to push higher, has no resistance in the way, and looks strong. And just quickly looking at the Nasdaq as well seeing a similar situation across the board a very overextended monthly chart on the nasdaq much like we're seeing on the russell perhaps even slightly more so but a bullish daily in fact pull back into the averages we now have bullish candles there as well maybe just a little bit uh, further to pull back on the nasdaq because unlike the russell it still hasn't pulled back on its weekly chart into its averages so even if that happened this week just bear in mind so even if the russell did pull back a bit further and you know, following, for example, the Nasdaq, if the Nasdaq decides to pull back to its averages, even if that did happen, it wouldn't matter. We'd still be in this moving average zone, and we'd just be looking to see if we can get another bullish candle to look for trading opportunities next week on the break of this week's bullish candle. But for now, assuming we don't pull back further, because I think the probability lies to increases this week, and if we break up through last week's high, I'll be bullish and looking for moves to the upside, but managing my risk uh, in accordance with understanding that there is a move to the downside coming sometime. I won't even say sometime soon because I don't know if it will be soon. I just do not have a crystal ball. There's a lot of people out there that talk about it as if they do have a crystal ball and they do know when the move is coming. But they don't because they've been telling us it's coming for a long time. In fact, since April 2009 when the market bottomed and really started to rally back upwards, there's been a lot of people telling us the market's bearish. And let's just have a quick look at how far the market has come since April 2009. So here we go. Back here where the market really started to bottom out. And we've come a very, very long way. People have been bearish the whole time. And some people are getting a bit more bearish up here and a bit more cautious. And, you know, we start to hear these words like QE and tapering and what will happen when the Fed decides it's time to stop pumping money into the markets. Ultimately, I think we'll get a bit of a sell-off. But just one final thought, one thing to bear in mind, traders and investors are also starting to realize more that when the Fed decides the market, the economy is strong enough to stop uh, to stop QE to start tapering when and if that happens, well so again when we don't know when it will be if it will be short term or long term but when that happens even though it will probably cause a sell off in the market in the short term in the longer term more than likely it's something that's good for the markets it means the economy is looking like it can stand on its own two feet without them needing to support it with their own money and that is ultimately more than likely going to be a good thing so we need to bear that in mind with that news as well rather than just you know, buying, building into the fear or buying into the fear that we're reading in the press about what happens when the, Fed's this, when the Fed decides to taper. Hope that helps ladies and gents. Happy trading. Have a great week and uh, look forward to updating you again on Ice Commentary next week.